we're back um, on Joker. Again, not having that good of a day, as you can see, but I just finished watching the movie again because I wanted to make sure that the things that we're going to talk about, I want to hit it around the head, you know what I mean? So, I'll start off by, it seems like it's a mantra these days, and it's something that I have actually adopted. Is it me, or is it getting crazier out there? I'm just wondering. And of course, you know, the therapist says, yeah, things are free, tons of people looking for jobs, blah, 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 blah. I'm just thinking myself, you're not listening. You're not listening. Before I go any further, I want to thank y'all for um, opening up. Some of you have, the first video, I did not expect that many views. Um, in the second video, it kind of took a decline, but that's fine. I'm not worried about that. Um, it opened up a lot of discussion, and that's what this is about. Um, I don't give a shit, you know me, I don't give a shit about views, I don't give a shit about, you know, subs. Um, but it opened up discussion between people and possibly getting help. So, and I wanted to say that, um, myself and Dark Master Community, we talked, uh, over the weekend about Joker because he went and saw it and he, you know, he gave me his opinion about it. And we talked for quite a while about it. So it goes to show you that I am willing to talk about this movie to anyone. It doesn't matter to me, you know, and he really related to it. He said that, you know, when he was in the theater, there were people laughing and munching on popcorn, and he's sitting there like, yo, that's not funny. That could be you. There's nothing funny about that. But needless to say, before we get started on the actual topics, I do, and I want to say this, I told you, I drink more coffee than Joker's fucking smoke cigarettes. I do want to talk about one penny fleck, Okay? And the reason why I want to talk about Penny Fleck up in here, I want to talk about Penny Fleck is because Penny Fleck is so depressed. I say depressed because y'all have to understand, no matter within all of her, as they keep saying, oh, well, she's clinically crazy, and she adopted Arthur, and she has this thing with Thomas Wayne. If you think about it, in the end of all this, Penny Fleck has such a condition, it's almost like a damsel in distress condition. Because no matter what, Penny Fleck is still waiting for Thomas Wayne to come and save her. That's what it comes down to. That's what it is. No matter if Arthur is giving her sponge baths, is feeding her, is taking care of her for years and years and years, what happens in that movie? Dear... Thomas Wayne is on TV. Okay, mother. He's a good man. If he knew the way we were living, he would not do this. It's sad to be Penny Fleck because... And I want to see a show of hands. Show of hands. How many people... And we talked about this before about relationships. How many people have gotten into an argument or a misunderstanding or whatever and... One is arguing and the other is trying to defuse unless both of you are really button heads or whatever. And the boyfriend or the girlfriend says, I don't know about us right now. And it stops you for a minute. You're like, wait a minute, what do you mean? So now you don't know. So there's three roads. You don't know whether she's trying to save you. You don't know whether she's going to kill it. Or you're going to have your own pride and say, I'm not going to sit around and wait for you to pick me like a piece of meat at a supermarket, I'm out of here. You know what I mean? Like, there's three roads. There's three paths. But with Penny, it became a problem. Okay? So no matter what medication that Penny was on, no matter how weak Penny's heart was, and we saw that because the police, when they came to interview her, she got hysterical and had a stroke, which was, again, I said in the last video, wrong with the police. I feel Penny Fleck, even though she didn't tell Arthur the truth, I don't know if she's, like I said, there's that delusion, or she's just hoping, she's holding out on hope, because she really did leave a lie for Arthur to go crazy, and we saw what happened, Arthur 
ended up killing Penny. He said, you know, this is not a tra I thought my life was a tragedy because of all this going on. It's actually a comedy. And he smothers her. And that's when the transfer well, somewhat of the transformation began. He felt liberated. Because it wasn't holding him back anymore. But I think it's time that we get back. And that's the reason I want to say is people have to understand with conditions, whether it's depression or any other type of psychosis or anything anything like that you have to understand when penny flex issue you can have somebody right next to you and telling you everything that you need to hear and it goes from one ear and out the other all right doesn't matter but if thomas wayne came into this bitch and said the same thing she would wake up and be like i knew it see he knows he knows and and, and you think to yourself I just told you the same fucking thing. So what am I, shit? I think that people don't understand when it comes to social anxiety or anxiety in general that sometimes that people don't take cues from others. And sometimes that they realize they stay in because it's not that they don't want to hurt themselves. They're afraid of themselves. They don't want to hurt others as well because that's fucking hurtful. For somebody to bend over backwards and tell you what's going on and what you need to do and you're ignoring them, but that random person or a person that you deem for some reason that is higher, god damn it, that fucking, thank you, thank you, turn that shit off. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but for people to sit there and, you know, listen, and, and, and all of a sudden have some type of importance and they say the same exact thing that you've said, you're going to feel lower than shit. Like, so what am I? What the fuck? I just told you everything. I've taken care of you. It doesn't matter if I said it. You know what I mean? But it took that person to get through to you. And that is very hurtful. It's very hurtful. Because you care about that person so much. And they're still not listening to you. But they'll listen to maybe in the company of strangers or to somebody else, even though they're saying the same exact thing. So, you gotta think, they just don't hurt themselves. They don't just try to protect themselves. They also stay away because they know it could hurt others as well. So I think we need to get started with the elite versus commoners, because this is going to have many different levels, I feel. It's not just classism, no. We're definitely going to get into this. So let's talk about the elite. And we're not talking about elite as in status. Alright, we can get into that level later. I'm not worried about it. We're talking about people in everyday fashion who think that they're better than you. So of course you could probably sum this up in short, the alpha versus the beta or whatever. I want to bring up a scene in Joker where... If you notice, after Arthur gets beat up, you, you know, in the beginning, he gets beat up by those kids. They take his sign and beat him up. Russell comes to him and says, look, I got a 38 for you. These people are savages. You got to be able to, you know, you have to defend yourself, you know? If you pay attention to the score of what's going on, the music, everybody plays the fool. You hear it over and over and over as he's accepting this 38 in a brown bag. And I'm thinking to myself, we know what's going to happen. You are playing the fool. You're playing his hands because Arthur thinks Russell is his friend, but we know Russell's playing him. And at the end of the day, Russell is going to turn his back on him because Russell is about Russell. We know that. But everybody's playing the fool. Everybody. And it's not just in a clown sense. We've got the other guys, as the manager had said, they think that you're a weirdo, they're not comfortable around you, it makes no sense. He goes in there, he does his job, he goes, you know, and, and tries to entertain, come home, let me come back, change, get paid, go home. That's his life, and take care of his mom. That's his life, that is Arthur's life. But for Russell to give him a 38, while that song is playing, it's like, yeah, Russell is looking to get you. He's looking to get you. 
And he did every time. So the elite versus the commoners, I want to bring it up because people who think that they're so alpha and others who think they're beta and others who think they're the omega. Um, we see in this film, as Joker said, if I was laying on the street, if I was laying down the street, you'll walk right over me. Every day I walk by, and we're gonna bring, I'll bring this up again, I walk by, you act like I'm invisible. A show of hands of how many times you have walked in a city and people have literally, not on their cell phones, literally looking right at you and bumped into you because they didn't see you. That's what I want to know. Some of them say sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Some of them bump you and keep walking. It happens. You're invisible. And it's amazing because when Arthur says to his therapist, you know, my entire life I felt invisible. But now people are starting to notice. And of course they didn't start to notice until he killed those three Wall Street guys. They're starting to notice. So he feels the answer at that point is just, you know, we're just going to move on. You know what I mean? I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing because I'm getting noticed. Because I've never been noticed my entire life. Why would I stop now? And of course, the therapist is just like, random old questions, same old bullshit. And she's like, look, you're on seven different medications. Something has to, something has to be hel helping you, right? And what, what's his answer? I, I just want to feel better. The entire time, it's all he's asking is, I just want to feel better. There's no time that anybody has felt, he's felt any warmth, anyone who's actually sat down and had a conversation with him, a legit conversation, not a therapist converse, uh, conversation, a legit conversation. His mother is too busy worried about Maury or Thomas Wayne that she doesn't really ask Arthur how his day is that much. The woman down the hall doesn't even really know him. The guys at work don't want to talk to him because they think he's creepy. This man is getting ready to break. And it seems like nobody understands that. So elite versus commoners. You're going to have a lot of people in this world who are the same. They don't have anybody. They just go on. They stay quiet. They just, you know, you don't know what they're suffering from. But it goes to show you that this is a really good introspective in, in, into someone's life that you could probably reflect from. And it's sad because society, it does show you, I mean, the film really does take a shot at society of letting someone down. It's not just letting someone down. It's beating them down, then letting them down, and then transforming them into what they are. And at some point, you got to think, yeah, there has to be some type of personal responsibility. I get it. He's an adult. But remember, Arthur has brain trauma. He's got a lot of anxiety. He technically doesn't know what's going on at times because he has his own delusions. And nobody is trying to help him. So when his medication gets cut off, it makes it even worse. It makes him more violent if you didn't notice. But I think that's another part for later. As opposed to the many layers of the elite versus the commoners, the Wall Street guys, clearly elite, bullying people, bullying Arthur until he shoots him and kills him, all right, which is another thing. And then nobody, as he said, nobody would have given a shit if Thomas Wayne didn't come out and cry about it and blah, blah, blah. And Maury says, you got a problem with Thomas Wayne? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And he goes on about it. Because if Thomas Wayne, he is so tired of hearing about fucking Thomas Wayne. <coughs> excuse me. He is so tired of hearing about Thomas Wayne every fucking day from his mom. He has gotten to the point where he is loathing Thomas Wayne. Not to mention that he's already talked to Thomas Wayne. 
you know, in person. And the first thing Thomas Wayne said to him was what? You want an autograph? Like, that is so arrogant. That is so arrogant. It just is. And like I said, he doesn't know how to talk Arthur down because he doesn't give a shit because he's Thomas Wayne. And here's the thing also with Thomas Wayne. If he's such a fucking float, oh, you know what? I'll, you know what? No, no. I'll save that part for later in the video because I got a lot to say about that shit with Thomas Wayne and the state funding and all that. We'll talk about that later in the video, all right? But it goes to show you that Arthur has... Ex He's exhausted all of his resources trying to find out the truth. And the more he finds out, the more he hurts. And it's not just one, and that's the thing. You gotta think in the comics, they would say, oh, the Joker, oh, all it takes is one bad day. No, Arthur's been doing this for years. Years upon years upon years upon years, and he cracked. He finally just gave in. So when he shot those guys, and Murray's like, hey, you know, there's riots going on in the street. This is all because of you. You know, and he's like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, I don't care. You killed those guys. <laughs> I don't care. Why? Because I have nothing to lose. Nothing can hurt me anymore. So whatever you do to me doesn't matter. It don't matter. Comedy is subjective to him at that point. So whatever you think is funny and not, this is a whole different story. And that's what I love about it because when the audience laughs, and it's funny because, and I'm going to explain this, and we're going to come back to this at the end. Um, in the Murray show, he's sitting there waiting, and, you know, behind the curtain, and he's smoking a cigarette, and he played a video again of them making fun of him. And if you notice... The transformation begins. That art that he was going after, he killed those three Wall Street guys. That performance art, he starts bending. He starts getting in the character. And if you notice, the people next to him are like, what the fuck is he doing? What is he doing? He's getting in the character. Because now, it's a whole different story. At first, it was just, he was just going to go out there. He's going to do whatever. But as soon as he saw that video, it changed Everything. Everything. So when he gets out there, of course, he's putting on a performance. It's performance, or it doesn't matter at that point. It's performance, you know? And it was a hell of a performance. It really was. And the fact that Murray just kept pushing him and pushing him. And I, I, like I said, I want to save it to the end. I really do. Because, I guess I shouldn't, because this, we are talking about the elite versus the commoners. Um, Murray said to him, is this a political statement? He was like, no, it's not a political statement. It's not. You know, I just want to make people laugh. But if you notice, in this interview, Murray is pulling out political statements out of him. He is pulling it out of him. So for something that was supposed to be political, is it has now become political. Because he's like, look, he's like, I'm not a political guy. He's like, do I look like a clown who can start a movement, who can start a riot? Come on. Like, come on, I'm nobody. You know what I mean? But then we start figuring out, as Mary keeps pulling it out of him, he starts talking about the social commentary of political... Like I said, there is so much going on in this film when it comes to political statements. Joker has become political. You pulled it out of him now. That's what you did. And the thing is, even before that, they bring him out, and they ask him to tell a joke. And he pulls out his joke book, and at first, remember, before he even pulls out the joke book, he just stares into the crowd. And Murray says, are you okay? And he said, this is exactly how I imagined it. And Murray says, well, that makes one of us. So it was a little rib. You know what I mean? It's a little rib. And you can tell the Joker was just like, ah, okay, you got me. You got me. It's not that big of a deal. You know what I mean? But when he pulls out the joke book, and he's reading, and he sees it, you know, everything he said. And he says, knock, knock. And Mary says, that's what you needed the joke for? That was the insult. That changed, that changed everything. He's like, okay, we're going to change it. Turn the page. Knock, knock. Who's there? 
It's the police. Your son's been hit by a drunk driver and he's dead. You know what I mean? Like, he changed the joke. Because remember, in the beginning, before going on Murray, the joke was, knock, knock, I'm going to kill myself in front of everybody on this show. The show society, this is what you've made me. And he changed the joke. Murray changed the direction of everything because Murray didn't know when to shut the fuck up. That was the problem. Because Mark Merritt, who's on the side, who's the producer, if you notice on the side, he's like this. Cut it. Stop it. Get him off the air. Get him out of here. He didn't even want him in there when he was in the dressing room. He was like, this is dangerous. And Mary's like, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. We got this. So it goes to show you the elite versus the commoners. People were in an upheaval. I see a lot of writers, you know, talking about some, oh, well, they use the Antifa route and blah, blah. No, this is Thomas Wayne telling everybody who's below him they're a bunch of damn clowns. And guess what? Every person who is poor or who has suffered or who is going through some type of tragedy, guess what? They reacted. That's all it was. There's no Antifa bullshit. No, it's people just rioting because they're mad. How dare you come out and say something like that about a bunch of people that you don't know? Thomas Wayne is the biggest fucking villain in this movie, and it's very clear. They made it very clear. Very clear. And it's just it was just sad to watch to see how it all went down. Like I said, it hurt. It hurts. I, like I said, I've watched this movie so many times, and every time I watch it, it just hurts more and more and more. So I think that Elite vs. Commoners, that is, that is a problem. It's a huge problem within people, not just stature, but people in general out in the street who think, you know, that they can just do whatever they want. They can just take your soul anytime they want. They can just bully you anytime they want. They can do whatever they want, and there's no consequences. As we see in the end, there were some consequences, right? Okay. But that's the problem. That's the entire point of the film. I think it's time we move on to our next topic. All right. I guess this is where we have to talk about state funding. We have to. This is just a, this is a huge part in the movie. It is. Regardless if anyone wants to acknowledge it or not, it is. So... State funding, all right? As we know, in Gotham, unless your last name is Wayne, state funding has fucked everybody, all right? Cutting off your meds, cutting off all your support, whether it's child, you know, whatever your 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 problem is, not just medication-wise, mental illness-wise. I'm sure that there's many forms of um, problems that people had that the state were trying to deal with and cutting them off, which is why I wanted to save this part, because Thomas fucking Wayne. Florentine, was it, Flor uh, was it philanthropist, right? Supposed to be? Philanthropist? If the state is having these problems, why aren't you helping? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Why aren't you giving some money? Why haven't you opened up something that would help Gotham that would say, look, these people are sick and they need help and I should help. Especially if you think you're going to make a run for mayor. Because all you're saying is, these people have problems and I'm going to try and fix them. Well, guess what? You need to start proving it before you can talk it. Thomas Wayne never did that. Never. So Arthur loses seven medications. You got to think, those seven medications didn't help him feel better. So he wanted an up in dosage. And they couldn't give it to him because they just cut off his medication altogether. And here's the thing. We talked about this before. You know, his therapist said, look, the state don't give a shit about you, Arthur. And then she said, the state don't give a shit about me either. But here's the thing. Even though it's a shot at the state, I'm thinking to myself, you're going to bounce back because you're a therapist. You'll find another job. Arthur is a party clown who just got fired. Not too many of those places are going to be looking around for party clowns. 
So for you to think that it'll be okay for Arthur to take him off his medication and he'll just find another job, like it's like that, when she spoke in the beginning saying, there are tough times right now, people are looking for jobs, what the fuck made you think that that was okay to say? There is a lot in this movie that is tough to read when you're reading people, like reading reactions, reading facial reactions, listening to dialogue. Um, it's very hard because you can see how it's like no matter how much he's reaching out to try and get help because it's not like he's not trying. He's trying to get help. And everywhere he goes, he is denied every time. And not one person is nice to him. You know what? There was two people in this movie that were nice to him. Two people. Alright? The guy he worked with, who was the dwarf or whatever, he was nice to him. And actually, the Arkham clerk was nice to him. You know? And he was just saying, he was like, look, if you need you know, someone to talk to, they got programs for it. And he was like... They caught all those. And it's true, they did. They caught all balls. But he doesn't know that. The clerk doesn't know that. So, but the clerk is still nice to him. You know what I mean? Until Arthur starts pull, trying to pull that file, and they're fighting back and forth, and then Arthur headbutts the uh, cage to get momentum to pull the file away from him. Which, personally, I did the same thing. I would do the same thing. So, there was only two people who were nice to Arthur in this entire movie because you gotta think even when he was watching the Mary show and he's having a delusion remember in the beginning he stood up and was like I love you Mary and he's like put a spotlight on that guy you know what I mean and he hugs him and everything and like all delusion never really happened so when Mary finally plays and if you look at the scene and you really need to pay attention to the scene the first time that Mary shows Arthur's video on TV and he's just laughing because of anxiety and he's holding his throat and all and you see Arthur's face, and he's just like, Mary is my idol, and he just threw me under the bus. And you see his face, just it just, it changes. It's almost like, it, he couldn't believe it, like it melted almost like. There's so much that's going on in this film that it's hard to just pinpoint down. You know what I mean? And I can talk about, let's have to talk about this shit for days. But you have to understand that even when he gets to Murray, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, let's be honest here. When it comes to the state and everything, you have all these people who are, they have money. They have money. None of them are reaching out and trying to help the people of Gotham. None of them. So you got a bunch of fucking lunatics walking around, hurting each other, robbing each other, beating each other, screaming at each other, and he said... All you do is, do you, leave your, do you leave your studio? All you do is scream at each other. All you do is, they're not civil anymore. He's like, it's enough to make you go crazy. And he says, is that your excuse? You know, being crazy? And Arthur's like, no, that's not my excuse. That's, that's, that's not an excuse, even though it should have been his excuse, because he is fucking crazy. But that's not the excuse that he wants to go with. Because then that's too simple. And he talks about how, you know, you know, you decide what's right, what's wrong, or whatever, and you expect us to just sit around like little good little boys until we werewolf and then go wild. And then the first thing that Murray does, which is the dumbest fucking thing he could do, is say, You sound like you got a lot of soft pity. And I'm thinking to myself, you don't understand what Arthur has been through for him to say that. Because when he said that, I'm thinking to myself, automatically, when he was a kid, chained to the radiator, being beaten the head, blunt force trauma, there's something wrong with his brain, he doesn't understand, so you're supposed to just take it like a good little boy, and that's it, Murray doesn't understand that, because Murray didn't care, Murray didn't dive into his history, Murray wasn't trying to, Mary was just waiting for a reply. He wasn't listening to Arthur. He was waiting for him to stop talking so he could reply back to him. Because he pointed the finger back at him. He was like, oh, you think I'm bad. You're the one who started the riots. It's like, dude, are you listening to what he's saying? Are you listening to what Arthur is saying? He is saying, you were awful because you showed my video. You tried to make fun of me. 
you brought me on your show just to laugh at me. Just like everyone else just laughs at me. That's what makes you awful. And Mary's response is, well, you just started a riot and all this, and you killed blah, blah. No, don't pass the buck. That's what he was doing. Instead of Mary admitting, look, this is show business. Yes, we, we do do these things. Yes, I did make fun of you. Yes, we did bring you on the show because there was a strong, because given the ratings, it was strong. People wanted to bring you in. And I'm sorry for that. That's all it would have taken. That's all. But Murray couldn't do that, could he? No. No. He had to sit there, and as you know, the the, the, the little smoke smile, like, yeah, uh -huh. that, that's what he's giving you. You know, you don't know me. You don't know me. Yeah, you know what? I know you well enough. So what do you get? Because you know what? Let's just have another joke, shall we? Can I help with that? No, I don't think we need another, another joke. Yes, you do. What do you get when you get a mentally ill loner who society has abandoned and treated like trash? What do you get? You get what you fucking deserve. And that's exactly the point. And the thing is, when he is saying that joke, the score raises the tension, raises in the music. So you know it's coming. You know it's coming. And when he shoots Mary, I'm just like, that's fucking beautiful. That is fuck. That is performance art. It is. It was. It was rage building. You knew it was coming. It was performance art. And he just stops. And he just looks. He looks at Mary dead. And he waits for a minute. Then he turns to the crowd. He's just like. <laughs> he just laughs. He just laughs. Because his life is a joke. Because nothing can go. You can't go any further than this. This is it. This is as far as it goes. This is the end. It's the end. So like I said, I got nothing to lose. Nobody can hurt me anymore. So it doesn't matter if I kill three Wall Street guys. It doesn't matter if I fucking smother my mother. It doesn't matter if I shoot Mur Mur Murray, if I shoot him in the fucking head on national TV. None of that matters because nothing can hurt me anymore. And the reason he feels that way is because society has let him down over and over and over throughout the years. This is something that has started since he was a kid, not just he had one bad day. And that's not it at all. So Murray got what he deserved. It was justified in Joker's brain. It was justified because awful people get what they deserve. Now as we know, Reality isn't like that. You know that. That's why it's a movie. However, we can relate to it due to the fact that I'm sure we've all had these type of tendencies. Now, before we go any further, I would like to move on into our next subject, which we will talk about this. Okay? So, let's get into our next subject, which will be guilt. Guilt. The movie really does challenge you on whether you have done things yourself that you can say, I could have done better. If you see somebody on the street, I like to see a bum on the street, could you have done something? Um, people who are mentally unstable, could you have helped them any? Um, like I said, myself, I know how it feels, and I feel like this, there's many layers of guilt. I can't tell you how many times I've bent over backwards trying to help people only to be stabbed in the back. And I feel guilty for that because it's like, maybe I could have helped more. Even though I'm helping as much as possible, maybe I could have helped more, you know, help that person get through that, you know, that, that dark tunnel and see that light. You kind of take a responsibility on that. So it's a heavy weight to burden at times. Um... But of course, you can't always take the guilt on everything. You can't. I think this film challenges its audience because of how bad society is. And there is a lot of guilt to go around. There's a lot of finger pointing to go around. It's not just within the characters, it's within society. And I feel as though when you let an individual down, like Arthur down, that, that is what you're going to get. We see it time and time again. People are shooting people in mass and we see people 
doing crazy shit these days. Child molestations and all this other stuff. It's like, and the first thing you think is they're crazy or whatever. And you gotta think, I mean, let's be honest here. Like I said, nothing but the truth here. Let's, let's be real here, all right? Every time somebody says something on Twitter, what happens? And it's bad. What happens? We jump on them, don't we? How dare you say that? Blah, 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 blah. We, we, we damn near dogpile them. Instead of trying to say, do you have a problem? Do you have a problem? Do you have a mental problem? And if they don't, and they're just saying that just for reaction, well then, of course, then you just go on and whatever. But you have to look at that person, and you have to say first before reacting, um, yeah, there's, there's, there has to be a problem. Like, not too long ago, the media, was it, the Guardian, was it, said that Joker uh, completely... Uh, it doesn't it doesn't attack depression or any other condition correctly and I felt that was bullshit that got a rise out of me out of no I was like get the fuck out of here I was like because I've seen people who would sit there and smash their head against a wall and just sit doing it doing it doing it you know what I mean so don't sit here and tell me that it's all fake it doesn't. It, it doesn't. It doesn't work that way. No, it does work that way. You gotta think as as they said in Arkham, and he asked the clerk when Arthur asked the clerk, he says, "How did people get in here?" He said, "Some people did some bad things. Other people, you know, kind of crazy. And there's others who. And this was the biggest part. He said, and there's others who have nowhere else to go. And that sat with me for a minute." Because it's true. There's people out there who have no else to go, so they will get themselves institutionalized. They will. It's sad to know that our society, and I know that you can't save everyone. No one is Superman. I get it. But that our, our society suffers so much within everything. Anxiety. We'll talk about social anxiety. Um, but the guilt behind the film because it challenges you you have no choice but to say hey yeah there's probably a time where I could have done this there's probably a time where I could have done that and like I said y'all know me I try to do as much as possible but it's it's it feels as though sometimes it's never enough for example um my barber as of late realized that I was losing weight because I haven't, I haven't been feeling well as of late I was losing weight he was like, you got to take care of yourself. And I'm thinking to myself, I am trying to the best of my ability to take care of myself. You know what I mean? I'm trying my best here. And it's still not enough for you. And I, I just wanted to freak out over it. Because it's like, dude, no matter what I do, it's not enough. You know? I, I, just, want, I just want to just explode. Because it's like, alright, I'm doing this. I'm trying to stay distracted. I'm doing all these things because of how I feel and it's not enough give me some fucking credit instead of telling me nah you, 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 you're you not doing enough give me some fucking positive reinforcement you know what I mean like that's how it felt that's exactly how it felt and I was just like whatever dude like whatever whatever you know I mean he didn't mean it in a bad way because he gave me a hug afterwards but it was just like there's always going to be people who tell you what you should do do this, do that, push this way, push that way, you should do this, you should do that, and at some point, you gotta tell everybody, stop, just fucking stop, and let me figure out this puzzle on my own, let me figure it out, so if you have to talk to yourself, then talk to yourself, you know, that's what you have to do, full blown conversation, I don't care, Look in the mirror at yourself and, and be honest with yourself. I don't care. Do what you have to do to be honest with yourself and how to get out of the situation. I understand that friends can mean well. But sometimes their advice can be damaging. You know, there's also said that there's people in the world who don't care either. So no matter what they've taken from you, you know that you're not going to get that back. And that's fine. Because it's experience. 
I think Loki said it best. You know, he said it to Thanos. He said it was, you know, you know, he said I got experience. He was like, well, losing is experience. It's like no, experience is experience. You know, and um, it's true. It's one of those things where it's like, no matter whether you win or lose in the end, you still get that experience. And there's times where, especially when you're dealing with guilt, even if it's not your fault, even if it isn't, you still feel it's your fault. Because you felt you could have did more. What could I have done better? What could I have done more? Why am I feeling this way? Why do I feel so fucking hurt that someone would do something like that? Even if the person apologizes to me, why does it still feel like I feel like shit? You know? Like, guilt. And it eats at you. And it just eating at you. Eating at you. Eating at you. And eventually, if you don't snap out of it, it will consume you. It will. So, and, it's, and that's the thing. More is like, it sounds like a lot of self-pity. It's not self-pity. You have to understand that this is how people feel because this is on an everyday basis of people that they deal with every day. It is not self-pity. Self-pity is sitting around and was like, well, fuck my life, blah, 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 blah. That's self-pity. And there's times you can be that way because guess what? You're allowed to be that way at times. You're entitled to be that way at times. Not everybody's going to feel great because not everything, not everything is sunshines and rainbows. It isn't. I can look out my window right now and I can tell you there's people out there ah, smiling and holding hands and everything. It's like, the fuck are you so, so fucking happy over? All this shit going on around us and that's what you're fucking happy over. You know? Like, there's times where you have to sit back and really look at the world for what it is. And there's so much guilt, so many problems. You turn on the news, you see everything that's going on, you see people getting away with shit. And it feels like always the bad guys are winning. And I hate to use the word bad guys because as we know, good and bad can be subjective. And sometimes there's shades of gray. And the search sometimes for happiness isn't a search for happiness. Yeah, and I thought that at first for Arthur, I was like, maybe he's just searching to be happy. But then I thought maybe it's just a search for self-preservation. I, I, I couldn't figure it out at first in the beginning. So for me, it was like, it's really tough to see what people go through. But in the news, I had to stop watching the news. I had to stop watching. Well, a two-year-old girl just got shot the other day. Like, I don't need to see that. But that's what the news does to you. Guess what? Turn the news off. I'm going to put on something else. I, I, can't, I can't do it. You know? The guilt weighs on you. And it weighs on you. And the thing is, especially if you're the person who's not in the wrong, you would think the person who was in the wrong, that that guilt would weigh on them, but they don't care. So, it's more of a conscience thing. And I'm not saying I'm the good guy here. I'm not saying that we're all fucking angels or whatever. I'm sure we've all done our bad shit. You know what I mean? But when you try to correct something, and it hurts more people, that's when you become the problem. And you have to stop and you have to think to yourself, okay, what am I doing wrong? And I, I said, I, that's why I think, like, all these questions that I'm giving you, this is what I'm getting from the film. You know, I'm just thinking to myself, what, what happened that made him go that far? And when I said, when I'm talking about these situations, these are things that you don't see on screen for years that he took, you know, that he had to deal with. We don't know what else he had to. And just to let you guys and girls know, um, there's talk of a part two coming. Yeah, there's talk of part two coming. I'm hoping that that doesn't happen. Personally, I think this is perfect. I think they need to move on. I don't think that they need to make a part two. I think they need to keep it the way it is and just leave it alone and focus on a different villain and let them do their own origin. You gotta think, DC has been knocking it out the park when it comes to standalone films. Aquaman did really well, all right? You had... Batman Begins did well, The Dark Knight did well, um, Wonder Woman did well, 
Joker did well. The only one didn't do well was what? Justice League. Even even controversially, Man of Steel did somewhat well. But the sing the standalone single movies are doing great. But this Joker one, they knocked this one. They just knocked this one off the park. They knocked this one to the fuck stratosphere. They really did. So, as far as I'm concerned, I would say focus more on villains. I don't give a shit about Birds of Prey coming out. I don't. It doesn't look good at all to me, personally. It doesn't. Would I like to see a standalone Harley movie? Yeah. Would I like to see a standalone Mr. Freeze movie? Yeah. Would I like to see a standalone uh, was um Hush movie? Oh, hell yeah. I would like to see where it has gotten to this point. I just feel as though, <coughs> excuse me, that there's more that DC could do. Don't follow Marvel's, um, don't follow their blueprint. Don't give all these, all these standalone movies and try to bring it together and bring some big tale. You don't need to do that. There's no reason for it. There's no reason. Do it the way you're doing, DC. This was a success. But just because it's a success doesn't mean that you need to make a sequel. That's the problem with Hollywood. They always think sequel, 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 sequel. You don't need a sequel for Joker. You don't. But I guess we should move on to social anxiety. Okay? So I guess let's get into that right now. So social anxiety. That's what we're going to talk about next. Raise your hands how many people have been to concert or have been to a football game or a hockey game or whatever and they're nervous and they don't feel safe. They get to the point where they're shaking and they're like, oh, I, I can't stay here, I can't stay here, I, I don't feel safe. And you have to get up and leave. Social anxiety to that point is serious. And I don't think people understand that. Social anxiety is also hard. Not It's not just a one-on-one -on -one thing. When you are in a crowd, you can get very nervous, and you feel as though you're being personally attacked. And when you're feeling that way, there's times, and I said there's many levels of social social anxiety. You could also probably in, induce a panic attack, depending. That's what you don't want. So of course, people take their medication, but if you're cut off your meds, then you're really screwed. Um, I think that it comes down to trying to be there for one another. So, not too long ago, I had a couple people message me and was like, yo, I really want to see the Joker movie, but I don't want it to, you know, you know, at, you know, flare up my anxiety. They didn't even want to watch the videos I was doing because of the fact that they thought that what I was, the topics that I was going to talk about was going to bring anxiety and I told them I was like then don't watch them don't watch them not to be mean I was like don't watch them because I don't want you to go through that you know what I mean I don't want you to go through that people who have watched the movie you, you already know that's why we're doing the breakdown but you know I, I don't want anybody to feel as though it's going to hurt them because that's not what this is about this is about talking about what's going on Opening up what's going on. It's opening up discussion. You know what I mean? Or how you feel on things. And for me, it was it was it's it's been a tough series to, to do. Because like I said, and even even when I'm done this series, I'm still gonna fucking watch Joker. I'm still gonna watch it. I watch it at least three times a day. While I was doing these videos, I was watching it three times a day. Now I'm like, I'm on autopilot. I'm watching it three times a day. I watch it twice during the day before I go to work, and then I watch it once before I go to sleep. But it goes to show you that you can dissect the movie as much as possible. I'm sure there's a lot of things I could still dissect in this movie and still miss some things. Um, but for media, the way they have acted over Joker has... At first, it made me mad, but not because of, oh, this mass shooting and all this. It's because they really are ignoring 
about mental illness. And this was on, what was it, Mental Illness Day or whatever, or Mental Illness Week? Like, how do you ignore such an important film about mental illness during that week? It made no sense to me, so that made me mad. Like, you really don't care. You don't. You, you want cl Okay, I get it. You want clicks. I get it. You want clicks. All right. But I'm not going to give you that click. Because I would see the screenshot. Someone, you know, on Twitter would screenshot it. And I would see it. And I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to dive into the article. It's not worth it. If you have a shit header, I'm not going to look at it. That simple. And that's, 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 the, that's the publisher, the editor, and the writer. All three of them. They know better than that shit. And that goes for a lot of gaming, too, when I do gaming videos, too. I remember I had one guy get mad at me over a game video. He was like, you didn't read my article. It was completely different than the header. Well, then why did you write the header the way it was, idiot? No answer for me for that, though. Because he wanted the clicks. Because that's what it's about. Attention. If there's anything that needs attention right now, it's the issue, not the person. And I think that that's what it comes down to. The people who do have the issues need the attention. And I think that even if we speak online and talk online, I don't know if that's going to make you feel better. Because... I'm not a therapist. I mean, we can sit around in a, in, a, in a group therapy, you know, or on Discord and talk in a group and just talk about our problems. I don't know if it's going to make you feel better. You know what I mean? I don't know if going and talking to a professional would make me or anyone else feel better. I don't know if any medicine that you would take would make you feel better. Just like Arthur said, I just want to feel better. So where do you go? At that point, what do you do? Do you just descend into madness? Do you take the medicine and then say, look, it's not, it's not working, I gotta take something stronger? And before you know it, you become addicted to it? Do you go talk to a therapist and feel as though, look, I'm not getting through to this person, I need to change therapist, I'm not getting through to this person, I gotta change therapist again, I gotta go through it, and you just gotta just keep going and going like it's a fucking carousel? Like, what do you do? And how long can you do it for? Because that's the biggest question. How long can you do it for? Because that's, that's why we see people kill themselves. That is exactly why. Because they can't do it anymore. They're tired. They've tried and tried and tried and tried and they couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. So, for me, it's very tough to watch the movie. But I, I feel like, seriously, when I watch that movie, I suffer watching that movie. But I feel also that it's necessary. Because it keeps me in check. You know what I mean? There's no reason to get arrogant. There's no reason to get all huffy and puffy. There's no reason for me to yell. and You know, un unless it's for an important issue, there's no reason for all that. So when I come on Twitter and I see people bitching and moaning about video games and all, I'm like, dude, if you don't see what's going on here, there's something wrong with you. They do it all the time. You look at some of these guys who are, who are talking about video games. It's like, he has problems. He's talking about video games, but clearly he has problems that he needs to be, that needs to be addressed but he's not addressing them. So I'm not listening to him or her. You know what I mean? I won't. I just feel as though we can do better, dare I say, as a society. I think it just starts with somebody being kind. And I know that sounds bad because, I mean, let's be honest, over the years I have called so many people out on their bullshit. I mean, come on. Y'all know how I am. I don't call people out unless they've done something wrong. You know what I mean? That's how it's always been. It's always been that way. But as I get older, even I get to a point where I'm like, you know what? No, nah, I'm not going to do that. Because I think there's more important issues, more pressing issues. But then you have these people who are acting so badly online, out in the world and online. And you have people cheering them on. I'm like, yo, y'all part of the problem. 
that's not for me to, you know, to, to come out and say anything. Because God forbid I get in more trouble. <laughs> you know, you know how that goes. Um, it's just, it's very tough. Some of you have already said, you know, I wish you'd go back and do sports videos. And you go back and you do your video game videos. I understand that's what y'all want. But to be honest, I just felt that this was more important before I decided to do that. So while I may go back and do them, I felt this was important. I felt it needed to be talked about. And I've noticed that, like I said, there's a lot of YouTubers who have covered this who haven't covered it extensively the way I've covered it. And yet they've got a billion fucking views. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, are you serious? You know what I mean? I told y'all before, I am always willing to talk about this. I don't have a problem getting on the Discord or a group chat talking about it. I have no problem. They said people reached out to me in many ways. They reached out to me, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. They have reached out to me, and it's like you know I don't have a problem talking because they they know that it's 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 not just about the movie itself. It's about mental mental illness in it, in in general. It is. So, I have people say, hey man, I, I can relate, and you know I lost my meds. I cut my you know they cut my meds, and I didn't know what to do, and I would, I would talk to them about like whoa like. You know, I feel bad for that, you know, that hurts. Sometimes, sometimes the things that y'all don't understand, there's a lot of things that y'all send me that hurts a lot. When I see y'all suffering, I stop for a minute and I pause. And I just look and I'm like, oh my God, this person is hurting so badly. And it hurts me to see you hurt so badly. But then when you say you made it out of it, I'm like, well, it's good for you. But I don't know if I could be that strong. I, at least personally, I don't know if I, if I can do that, but to see that y'all hurt so badly for no reason, and, and it's not your fault either because you have a condition, it, it's, it's, it's very hurtful to watch, it, it, it hurts me to see that because it's like, you want to be good people, but it's hard to be a good person, you know, and all you can do is keep working at it, that's all you can do. I would do a part four of this if I if I did a part four, it would just be a simple Q and A. I think I've hit just about everything I wanted to hit today. Um, in this series, uh, like I said, if if if, if so, like I said, part four, y'all would have to have to come with some serious questions, and I would I would just sit and just answer them. You know what I mean? Like some hardball questions. But if if y'all don't y'all don't care about doing that, then I, I'm not making another Joker video. There's no point. I don't think there's a point. I think I've covered it more than enough. And I think that I can just sit back and I can just watch it on my own. You know? And just do me. You know what I mean? Um, again, I want to thank you for... Uh, let me pull this up. Um, I want to thank you for watching these videos. Regardless how big they become or how small they become. Because it doesn't matter. Because the objective was to get you to talk. And you know, bring conversation. So I want to thank you for doing that. I also want to thank everybody for reaching out to me because you don't know how much that means to me. You don't know. It, it means a lot. It does. You know, when I'm going through and then having to talk to you and saying, "Hey, look, I understand," you know, how it feels, and that means a lot too. It does. I think I get more support here, to be honest, than I do out in the real world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of funny. <laughs> it's alright though, you know. <sighs> yeah, it's it's kind of funny, but um, but no, thank you, and. As Maury and Jugger say, good night, everyone, and remember, that's life.